The next method we're going to consider is going to be how do we insert elements into a binary search tree? You might've thought we'd deal with this first because it seems like a very natural thing to do. We really decided to hold off because it's a bit awkward. Suppose we wanted to perform the operation insert 14. Where would 14 have to go in this tree? Well, let's figure that out. Well, it's less than 15, so it had better be over here. And it's greater than six, so it had better be over here. And it's greater than eight, so it had better be over here. And it is greater than 13, so it had better be over here. Hey, look, I found a place to put it. Notice that was pretty much the same as we were doing when searching, which is kind of convenient. So the code here will look kind of similar. What we're actually going to do is sort of abstract out one part of this code, just because it will be a little bit easier to look at. What I'm going to do is locate the parent node I would need to place this node next to. So our first bit of code here is all designed around locating that parent. So we are going to loop doing our standard search until we find an empty location. Notice I'm finding the parent. Y here corresponds to the parent node to Z, Z being the thing that is being inserted. So I'm going to loop until I find an empty place and then I'm going to return the parent of the empty place. This is the exact same as our search algorithm otherwise, and this is a relatively straightforward method. This is of course going to be in theta of H again, because we are always making an exclusive decision between going left and between going right. So any method that does that and does no other sophisticated computations will take theta of H. Now, assuming that we have this locate parent method, our tree insert now looks much nicer. Notice this locate parent took like 12 lines. So part of the reason I abstracted that idea out is because I wanted to make this look a little bit nicer. So step one, find out where we got to go. Then my parent is going to get set to be Y. And if Y is a nil, which is possible in that code that we gave above, we have just actually started building a tree. So we're going to need to assign Z to be the root. Why do we have this? Well, if you start with an empty binary search tree, you need to account for that in your code. Now, if Z was less than Y, then I'm going to need to set it to be Y's left child and otherwise the right child. Notice this is our convention we are talking about. This is less than and then to the right is greater than or equal to. Let's go up to the code and see what I mean there. Here, 14 became Y's right child. Let's say I wanted to insert 16. Well, 16, I would need to go to the right and then to the left and then over here, 16 would go there. And 16 was the left child because it was less than 17. So that's just assigning the pointers. I know lots of you are in systems two right now or systems one, and you are in absolute love with pointers. So we are going to do as much of that right now as we possibly can to really increase your joy with that subject. One last thing we'll comment on is how do we update the sizes of things when we do this insertion? Well, let's scroll up. When I inserted this node, let's fill in the sizes beforehand. So let's undo this insertion of 14 and then redo it again. The sizes of this tree were originally. Now let's imagine I inserted my node 14 over here. After having performed that insertion, what did I break? Well, I didn't break anything over here and I didn't break anything over here, so that's good. But now I'm lying. This node has a size of one, which means that this one up here has a size of three, which means this one up here has a size of four, which means this one up here has a size of eight, which means that this one up here is a size of 12. Notice I'm oh, I only had to go up and never had to go down. And therefore this algorithm should be relatively efficient for updating the size. So let's see how that works. If we scroll down, we have insert and update size. How does this work? Well, we, we perform an insertion and then we are going to update the size of Z's parent until we get to the root. Exactly like we did. And we're only ever adding one because we inserted exactly one node.